Here I have a variable x, okay? You know that x, when you don't have anything else written down, it just means it's a placeholder for a number. Could be five, could be three, could be 17, could be four, right? But if I add something to the right of this, then we'll lock it down and it'll be very specific value. So if I say x and put this symbol next door with a two, what does this mean? This symbol is when you, you read it left to right and it, it is the greater than symbol. Remember, the inequality always points to the smaller number. So the open side here must point to the larger number. The way that you read it in terms of English, when you, when you encounter the large side first, when you get to the big side first, it's called greater than. So this is called greater than. Right? So x is greater than 2, but we have a little underline underneath it. So you know how an equals, an equal sign is like two lines, right? Well, this is very similar to that. The top part means greater than, but the bottom part means equal to or equal to. Right? So what this means is that x can no longer take on any value I want, right? Like think about an equal sign. If I tell you x equals 4, that means x has to equal 4. If I tell you x is equal to 19, then you know x is 19. But here, we're not saying it's just equal to something. We're saying that x is larger than or greater than or equal to 2. That's what it actually means there, right? So in a nutshell, any number uh, that is the number 2 or larger than 2 is, uh, is what x can be. So 2 can be 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, all the way up to infinity because it just has to be larger than or equal to 2. It could be any number. It could be 100 million. Anything bigger than 2 or equal to 2. Now remember, the numbers here that work go into x can be any number. They can be decimals. That also means that any number bigger than 2, even tiny little fractions or decimals, uh, are in, included in this as well. So for instance, 2.1. 2.0001, 2.0000001, right? That's just a tiny bit bigger than two. And so it also satisfies this as well. So any number bigger than two, greater than two, or equal to two. Now I want to show you that typically what we do when we graph these inequalities is we put them on a number line here. And so what we're gonna do in a minute is we're gonna solve uh, an inequality. We're gonna use the rules of equations to solve for the values of x, but we're going to have that inequality symbol. So the answers we get will always look like what I just wrote on the board, greater than or equal to. And we always want to draw a picture of that. So for instance, if I was going to represent this guy, I'll just kind of draw a little arrow here. Remember what we wrote down is x is greater than or equal to 2. I'm just reminding you what it is, right? What we are saying is that if it was just x is equal to two, we would just put a dot on the line. That's what we would put here because the dot on the number, number line is where x is equal to two. But we're not saying that x is just equal to two. We're saying it's equal to two plus any other number bigger than two. So what you do is you put a solid dot here to show that two is, is included in this because it could be equal to two. But then what we do is we shade to the right like this. And what you do is just kind of carry it on out as far as you want. And you put a little arrow at the end. What this graph is really telling you, kind of came off the graph here a little bit. What this graph is telling you is we're shading the number line anywhere in the shaded region on this number line is what this inequality represents, essentially. So before, if I told you x is equal to 4, you just put a dot on the number line. If I tell you x is equal to 3, you just put a dot on the number line. But if I tell you that x is greater than or equal to 2, then you have to put a dot on the number line at 2 because we have the equal sign here as well. But the shading tells you any number bigger than 2 as well is what x can be. And also, I have the whole numbers here, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, but all of the numbers between, for instance, 3.5 is right here. Uh, x can be 3.5. Uh, 4.67923 is a decimal somewhere around here. Any decimal that exists between these whole numbers larger than 2 or equal to 2 is included in the answer here when we say inequality x is greater than or equal to 2. Let me show you one more and then we'll actually solve our first inequality. What if we turn the arrow around? What if we say x is less than 5? Now notice here I don't have an equal sign here. I just have a less than symbol because we, we read left to right and we encounter the pointy end first. This is read as less than. Right? It, it's not equal to, right? Because I don't have a little equal to bar underneath it. So what I'm saying here is x can be any value less than 5 but not equal to 5. Less than 5, but not equal to 5. In other words, 4 is included uh, in that 
in the, in the possible values because it's less than five, right? Zero is less than five. Even 4.999 is less than five, so it works and it is, it is, it is uh, satisfies this and it's part of the numbers, but five itself is not part of the solution here. So what we can do is we can graph that as well, right? We can go over here. I'm just gonna write this right here. X is less than five. Just kind of, kind of, this kind of line goes with this right here. But notice that there's no equal sign here. So we don't wanna put a solid dot here because five is not really included. What we do is we put an open circle here on the number five. The open circle tells you that it's centered on five, but five itself is not included here. But we still shade all of the numbers, but notice how the, the numbers are going the other way because it's numbers less than five. So it's all of the smaller numbers. So you kind of get over here and just do your best to do some shading. You can carry it as far as you want put a little arrow and call it a day. So a couple things I need to make sure you understand. When the arrow points to the right, when X is greater than something, then the shaded region goes to the right past the number. When the arrow points to the left, it's just all values less than the number. And then if you have a, an underline underneath as well, you have to make the dot solid because that number also is included in the possible values of X. That's what it means, greater than or equal to two. But when there is no line underneath here, then of course it's not equal to five, it's just X less than five. So four, three, two, one, even 4.5, 4.7, those are all okay. Just five itself, the exact number five is not included. So what I need to do now is show you our first inequality that we're going to solve. So here we were just kind of graphing them and trying to understand it. Let's take a look at our first actual problem. X minus three is less than or equal to four. All right, so notice that this looks very similar to an equation. The equation version of this, if it was an equation, would be x minus three equals four. Now you already know how to solve this, right? Because this is uh, an equal sign and we know that we can do whatever we want, so we would add three to this side and we would add three to this side. And as long as we do it to both sides, we keep it balanced and everything's fine and we get a value for x. So what we're gonna do for the inequalities is I want you to just pretend it's an equal sign. I know it's not an equal sign, but ultimately I just want you to ignore it and just pretend it's an equal sign. We're going to solve the equation the exact same way that we always solve equations. We're gonna apply that to this inequality because the rules are the same. I have one exception I'll show you in a second, but the rules are basically the same. So let's go ahead and rewrite the problem as we always do. All right, like this. Now. What do we have going on on the left? Again, pretend this is an equal sign. Pretend there's no arrow here, just an equal sign. We have a minus three. So we wanna do the opposite of that by adding three to the left. And to keep it balanced, we have to add three to the right. You see the rules are the same for, as for equations. And then we have minus three plus three and they cancel out to give you zero. So all you have on the left-hand side is X. This symbol stays the same. It's pointing the same direction. All of it is the same. And then four plus three is seven. So four plus three is seven. So what we have figured out is that X has to be less than or equal to seven. Now, I'm gonna explain a lot more about what this actually means, but first, before we do anything else, I want to graph the answer to this thing, okay? So let's go over and remember, the answer to this problem is X less than or equal to seven. So I'll write it right here. It'll be kind of right here x less than or equal to seven, that's the answer, right? So notice that there is an equal sign here, so we go to the number seven and we put a solid dot here, and we have a less than or equal to, which means we shade to the left. All numbers less than seven, but also equal to seven. So what this means is, when you have an equation, like the way I wrote it down in the, in, a, in the first part right here, when you have an equation, there's only one value that's gonna work in this equation, and the number that's gonna work is gonna be seven. Because if you put seven in here, seven minus three is four. There is only one value for these equations that work, that make the answer work, right? But when you have an inequality, there's actually an infinite amount of answers that work here. What answers have, have we decided on from this? Well, it have to be less than or equal to seven. So that means that seven works and anything less than seven, right? Six works, five works, four works, three, two, one, zero, <laughs> and then you go to the negative numbers, they also work too, dot, 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 right? So there's literally an infinite amount of numbers that work in this original inequality. The solution is telling me anything less than seven, but equal. So let's pick a value, let's say five. Let's put five in here. If you put five in for the answer, five minus three is what? Two, 
and two is less than or equal to four, so it works. What about the number three? Let's put three in here, three. Three minus three is zero. Zero is less than or equal to four. And we haven't really gotten to subtracting negative numbers yet, but when you put numbers down here, you'll get a negative number which is also less than or equal to four. What if you put the number seven in? Seven minus three is four. So four, is it less than or equal to four? Yes, because four is equal to four. And notice that this is an equal symbol as well. So what an inequality is, is just replacing the equal sign with an inequality symbol. You completely ignore the symbol and use all the regular equation uh, rules of solving equations, doing everything to both sides, until you finally get it into what it looks like to solve an equation. But instead of an equal sign, you have this symbol here that you read as S, x is less than or equal to seven, which means there's an infinite number of numbers that we can put into this thing and still satisfy the inequality. And when we graph it visually, what it's basically telling us is the number seven plus all of these numbers to the left off to negative infinity, they all work when I put them in there. So we're graphing the solutions because you can just look at the graph and anywhere you see a shaded thing here, and if there's a dot, that number works as well, counts as a solution. All right, now there is one gotcha I wanna talk about before we finish solving all the problems. And that is, I told you that we use the same rules of solving equations for, in, for inequalities. That is true. All of these are going to involve adding and subtracting. So it's, it's going to be quite uh, easy once we get the hang of it. But if, when you're solving inequality, later on down the road, we're gonna cover this a, a little more later. When you're solving an inequality, if you have multiplying and dividing going on, if you multiply or divide, both sides of this inequality by a negative number, if you multiply or divide the inequality on both sides, because you can do what you want, right? If you multiply or divide by a negative number, then the symbol must flip the other way. The arrow points the other direction. And I know that you might see that the first time, like why does that happen? I don't want to get into why it happens because it's not the focus of this lesson. We're gonna to get to it later and I'll explain it in great detail later. But I just want you to know that the rules of solving inequalities are exactly the same as solving equations. The only difference is if you ever multiply or divide an inequality on both sides by a negative number, then the symbol has to flip directions. And that's because when you multiply by a negative, it kind of changes the the meaning of what the sign is. I'll get into it later, but that's why. But for this lesson, we're not gonna actually have any of those problems, so um, I don't wanna focus on it too much. So now what I'd like to do is crank through and solve more problems. Let's say we have h plus four is less than or equal to five. So what we do is we completely ignore and pretend this is an equal sign. So we just rewrite it, h plus four, give ourselves some space, less than or equal to five. Now what are we doing here? We are adding. So to get rid of the four, we'll subtract on both sides. The only thing that will be left on the left-hand side, because this is zero, is h. The symbol, inequality symbol, comes down, and five minus four is one. So what we are saying here is that the, this value of this variable can be anything less than one, but it also can be equal to one, right? So let's pick something less than one. Let's go with zero, because that is less than one, right? Put zero in here, zero plus four is four, and four is less than or equal to five, so it works, that number works. Let's put the number one in here, because we have an equal sign, one can go in here, one plus four is five. Is that less than or equal to five? Yes, because five is equal to five. But let's pick something wrong here. We say that it has to be less than or equal to one. Let's pick the number four. That's definitely not part of the solution, because it's bigger than one. Let's pick four. Four plus four is eight, and eight is not less than or equal to five. So this answer here, it tells us all the possible values of the variable that work in the equality. When we solved any equations before, there was only one answer. But here, there's an infinite amount of answers for inequalities, okay? Now, how do we graph this one? It's h less than or equal to one. So over here, I'll do something like here h less than or equal to one, that's what it is. And it has an equal sign here, so we're gonna put an e we're gonna put a solid dot right here, and it's less than or equal to one. That means it has to be shaded to the left, smaller numbers. As we did, we already checked uh, zero, we checked one, and we, if we checked any of these other ones, then we would find out that that is correct as well. Okay, so less than or equal to one. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.